There's a lot of talk right now about how much better the Eastern Conference has gotten this offseason. You've got the Nets, who hopefully will be looking healthy for next season with the new veteran in Patty Mills. The Bucks looking to run it back, the Celtics retooling, and the Heat having arguably the best offseason so far by winning the Kyle Lowry sweepstakes. But there's one team that I don't think gets enough credit for how well they've rebuilt from where they used to be, and that's the Charlotte Hornets. I honestly believe that if it wasn't for such terrible injury luck with LaMelo Ball and Gordon Hayward last year, we would have easily seen them in the playoffs. Gordon Hayward missed a good chunk of the season with an injury, and LaMelo Ball was out for 20 plus games with a fractured hand. But with the drafting of James Booknight and Kai Jones, this team continues to add to their nice collection of young talent alongside some solid veterans. In this video, I'm going to break down why I'm so excited to see what the Charlotte Hornets are capable of with a healthy roster this year. We're going to cover a lot in this video, so be sure to stick around until the end so you don't miss anything. The Charlotte front office received a ton of criticism last offseason, primarily for giving Gordon Hayward such a large contract after coming off two very injury-riddled seasons. But many of the doubters of the contract were silenced, at least for a while, when Gordon Hayward started the season having the best year of his career since his last All-Star season in Utah, averaging 19.6 points, 5.9 rebounds, and 4.1 assists per game, while also shooting 41.5% from three on almost five attempts per game. He was looking like he could potentially return to that all-star form that we saw from him early on in his career. He would unfortunately end up missing the last 23 games of the season with a right foot sprain, but if he can manage to keep himself on the court this next season, he could be a large part of the Hornets' success in the future. Prior to the injury, he was in all-star conversations. If he can come back healthy next year, the Hornets can easily be a threat for the playoffs. The next player that I want to talk about that I don't think gets nearly the amount of credit and praise that they deserve is Terry Rozier. Rozier broke out during his time in Boston when Kyrie Irving missed the playoffs, forcing Rozier into a significant role on a team that would make it to the Eastern Conference Finals. While Rozier showed a lot of promise during that run, I don't think anyone expected him to receive a $57 million contract with the Hornets. A lot of people criticized this move similar to the Gordon Hayward contract, saying that it was a massive overpay, which honestly, at the time of Rozier receiving this contract, I personally was one of the people that questioned the contract and whether or not it was even a smart move. But looking at Rozier's season last year, you gotta imagine that $20 million a year for a guy who averaged 20.5 points while shooting 38.9% from three on 8.9 attempts per game is actually a really, really good deal. Not many guys in the NBA can actually do that. Not to mention, Rozier is only 26 years old. He's still very young and probably just now entering his prime. Having him locked down on a long-term deal is going to be something super beneficial to this franchise as they look to put a contending team around the player that I want to talk about next. You can't talk about the Charlotte Hornets without talking about the one and only LaMelo Ball. LaMelo came right into the league and was exactly the player that we expected him to be. There was a bit of a rocky start at the beginning of the season with coach James Borrego not starting him until later on in the season, but once he was starting, we got to see LaMelo's full skill on display. In 31 games as a starter this season, he averaged 18.1 points, 6.2 assists, and 5.9 rebounds per game with 1.7 steals, while shooting 38% from three as a rookie. These are incredibly promising numbers for a guy who is only 20 years old. His upside is about as high as he wants it to go, and I could easily see him progressing to, at the minimum, a 20-point, 7-rebound, and 7-assist guy next season. His floor vision is absurd, making cross-court passes look easy, and his shot creation and finishing ability are really promising aspects of his game that I really see developing over the coming years. He's also an underrated defender, and as a 6'6 point guard, 
He has all the tools to develop into an elite defender with the ability to help defend multiple positions. I don't know just how high his defensive ceiling is, but I have no doubt that he's going to be more than serviceable while offering elite production on the offensive end. They also have the high-flying dunker Miles Bridges, who had arguably the best highlight reel of any player in the NBA this season. I'm really intrigued with Miles Bridges as a player because not only is he stupidly athletic, he's also an incredibly efficient scorer. He had a true shot percentage of 62 and a half this season, and he would have been 50-40-90 club if he had shot better from the free throw line. To me, he's a bit more versatile than to just reduce him to a 3 and D guy, and while I don't know if he's a potential future all-star or anything like that, I do know his game complements LaMelo Balls really, really well, and I think he's going to be an integral part of the Hornets' future success. Now, I want to run down some of their other off-season acquisitions before we get into one of the most important parts of the video. They snagged Kelly Oubre Jr., who, although he was incredibly underwhelming for the Warriors this year, he can hopefully come in and be a productive piece for the Hornets. They also acquired Ish Smith, who honestly is one of the best backup point guards in the entire NBA. He flew under the radar this year because he was on the Wizards, but he still is very productive and can be a solid piece off the bench for Charlotte. They also snagged Mason Plumlee in a trade with the Pistons, who had one of the best years of his career last year, and he can be a productive center for you either in a starting role or off your bench. Obviously, it's not ideal if he's starting for you, but they can make do for now. They'll need to look for an upgrade at center eventually, whether that comes from their development or in free agency or through a trade, but for now, he'll be fine. So this next group of guys that I want to talk about with the Hornets that makes me really excited is their young pieces. They somehow managed to snag James Booknight at 11th overall despite him being projected to be picked in the top 5-7 to seven range. The 6'4 shooting guard had a great sophomore season at UConn, averaging an impressive 18.7 points and 5.7 rebounds per game, being one of the most prolific scorers of his draft class. I really like Booknight's game. He's a competent ball handler, he has some really nice finishing ability being able to make mid-air adjustments and use his footwork to get a clean shot at the rim, he's also a really good mid-range pull-up shooter. He was a sub 30% three-point shooter at UConn, but he should have no issues developing a three-point shot and his strength at mid-range scoring and finishing more than make up for the lack of a reliable three ball. He's also one of the most impressive defenders in this draft class, having unlimited potential with the 6'4 frame and 7'0 wingspan. He'll have all the opportunity in the world to become a significant part of this Hornets team, and with his potential, he could become one of the better two-way guys in the entire NBA. They also drafted Kai Jones with the 19th overall pick, and honestly, I didn't know very much about him prior to making this video. He's incredibly, incredibly raw. He didn't start playing organized basketball until he was 15 years old, so that makes sense. But he also has limitless potential. He's six foot 11 with stupid athleticism, being a great lob threat for LaMelo Ball. He needs to pack on some size and work on his decision making and IQ, but he's someone that has a ceiling as high as anybody's. He has the stretch ability to fit as a big man in the modern NBA, it's just a question of if he puts together the pieces to do so. He was a 38% three-point shooter, he could hypothetically become a standalone center or play alongside another big at the four spot. This versatility makes him an intriguing pickup for Charlotte, and I'll be interested to see what they decide to do with him this season. And they also still have PJ Washington, who I still have a lot of faith in as a player. He's a reliable shooter and has some solid shot creation ability for his position, grabbing 12.9 points and 6.5 rebounds per game this season, while shooting 38.6% from three. He's another situation where I'm not sure how high his ceiling goes, but there's no doubt he's going to be a solid contributor, 
you just have to hope that the off-court drama doesn't have any impact on this upcoming season. They also have a lot of young guys in the G League right now that were second round picks or late first round picks that are developing, so you gotta hope that some of these guys can pan out. So all things considered, I think the Hornets have one of the most underrated young cores in the entire NBA. They're working with a solid combination of young guys and veterans, and they have a lot of high upside guys on that roster. Even if only one or two of them reach the higher end of that upside, this team could become a threat in the Eastern Conference, especially with a lot of the top end talent in the Eastern Conference starting to age out a little bit. Also, LaMelo Ball is looking like a potential superstar, so if you put the right pieces around him, I truly believe they can make the playoffs this season. It just comes down to a question of how healthy they are and how big of developmental leaps some of their young guys take. So do you think that the Hornets make the playoffs this season? Be sure to leave a comment below and as always if you enjoy this video please be sure to leave a like and subscribe. Leaving a like is the best way to help me out with the algorithm so with all that being said I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks.